Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Worlds 2023. It's time for our second best of three for the day. It's T1 going up against BLG. Let's go ahead and check in on who the fans predicted to win this one in our MasterCard fan predictions. Each day you can head on over to at MasterCard, at, at MasterCard GG on X to participate. So let's go ahead and check what those numbers look like. Don't say I'm surprised. 64%, <laughs> nearly two thirds of fans believe in the T1 win. One of those 35.6% is me. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. I mean, yeah, we talked about it on uh, the, the podcast, right, where BLG should feel like favorites coming into this matchup, especially when you look at T1, some of the struggles that they have had so far in this tournament. Um, but let's see what, what adaptations have they made coming into this, and uh, how can they match up against BLG. Rematch of the MSI uh, best of five, where we saw BLG get the better of T1. And, All right. And I want to see what style BLG go for, because this is this is one of the few teams that still held on to, like, let's have a Fiora top lane for Bin. Go ahead, True. pick whatever you want. Let's have Shun play Nidalee and Kha'Zix and oh, these no, assassin don't remind me of that draft, man. <laughs> I'm no, just no, no. throwing it out there. It is always a possibility with this team. Yeah, you got to set the stage for possibilities at the beginning of a series, right? Anything could possibly happen. So let's see what we got in the bands. It's Maokai, Nico, and Jax banned out by T1. BLG getting rid of Renata, Zaya, and the Rumble. First pick of this one will be John. Marvin for owner. I like the rumble ban here. Give Bin a little bit more freedom uh, from this red side. The Renata ban does suggest that maybe they're looking at an early Alistair or maybe even an early Nautilus. The Orianna being up, Yagao going to be grabbing that for himself. Having a, spoken a little bit more to Hysterics, one of the things I debated with him is PLG have felt a little slower in terms of their oh. early game prowess, even in their series against LNG where they ended up falling short. Game one, they were very dominant, but as the series went on, it felt harder and harder for them to find those early game advantages. And I did wonder, is it because of the shift in the mid lane meta where Yagao doesn't have as many mid laners to be able to unlock and roam around the map? And now that he's being put on the Orianna, I wonder if this favors a T1 where you do get to scale a little bit more and go for those team fights. But then again, BLG is one of the best team fighting teams <laughs> in the world. So uh, yeah. we'll see they, how T1 fair. They certainly have looked their best when y Yagao can just go help Bin and and Elk in the, in the side lanes and, yeah. and Bin and Elk just go sicko mode on the game <laughs> and, and duo carry it, basically. But we shall see here as the Azir has picked up an answer uh, to the Orianna. See if Faker also is a Hell of Blades Azir enjoyer. Seems like that has really been taking preference so far. And with Jack's band, guess what? Our triumvirate of the top lane. Ooh. Never mind. Zeus, nah. Zeus, okay. Yeah. Zeus with some pocket picks of, you know, Kennen, Jace, and Nar possibilities. I like it into the Renekton because it's more of like, look towards later stages in the game. And T1 going to take a little bit long view. It's also just part. like, it's such a good Zeus pick. He's such an incredible Nar player. I also always love it with Jarvan because Cataclysm into Mega Nars, you get just more area to try and crash people into. Yeah. Well, How let's see. How many power picks are on both sides here? Yeah, it's kind of impressive, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> Rel Oriana on the side of BLG, Azir, Jarvan. Obviously, we haven't seen a huge priority of Azir, but the Hail of Blades. Azir is something we saw from Showmaker very early in the tournament against Caps, and it's an ability, f it gives you the ability, rather, to get push in that lane, out-trade the Oriana using your long range. Uh, so we'll see if Faker goes for that direction. But top side of the map has been a high priority. Of course, this rail can still be flexed. So now the bot lane will be targeted. And unsurprisingly, BLG are going to start banning things away. The Alistair going to be taken away from Carrier. Don't think we'll see a Bard ban, but you've always got to be prepared <laughs> for it in case Carrier chooses to bring that one out again. All right, support focus, man. The Alistair, the Recon, like you're talking about. Are we going to continue with that here in this second part of the second half of the bands? Let's see, taking the time to think about it. No, getting rid of the Caitlyn instead, the long range marksman power in the lane. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, you think about long range champs that often pair up with Azir. Ezreal and Caitlyn are two very prominent ones. Caitlyn also gives you a very strong bottom side of the map, and Gumiyushi, uh, he's been known for a pretty good Caitlyn performance here and there. That's all right, man. Yeah. Oh, definitely showing that respect towards him. Will T1 look to ban away further AD carries, or will they actually, oh, they're going to choose to remove the Sejuani so that they can limit that Renekton Sejuani strong top side of the map. So they've taken away a lot of the tanks, but not the Poppy. So they could go Rel plus Poppy and have a very, very strong front line. Uh, and the Poppy also could have pretty good W value versus all three of the T1 champions at the moment. But they want to jump on the Kai'Sa pick first, it looks like. 
Oh, the center hover. Oh, oh, tier oh boy. One Give me more. Inspired by North America, perhaps. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, really you have a classic NA inspired yeah. Korea. Yeah. <laughs> I think the last time that that actually happened, and it was T1 picking up two, was all the way back to 2016 MSI. Afromu. Afromu, exactly. For CLC. Oh! But Hey, hey! Oh, Shun Snidely! <laughs> Told you so! He can pull it out whenever he, he can, wants, baby! He, he has the card! Yes. You can pull the Nidalee card whenever you want if you are Shun, and it's with the Renekton, okay? For those, the best combo with the Nidalee. For those that don't know, that don't get to watch the LPL that much, Shun is a very well-known Nidalee player. This is one of his comfort picks, something that even earns respect bands domestically in the LPL. Uh, when they used it against LNG, I didn't love it. I was <laughs> a big fan of it. Um, but let's see how it works out today against T1. I mean, I'm a resident Nidalee hater. I feel like the champion can often run into a lot of difficulties, but the situation where it always works best is with guaranteed CC to set it up oh, for the yeah. Spears. Renekton when, Nidalee. Exactly. When it has something like Renekton, point and click, you can't really mess those up, and it makes it easy for the Nidalee to get in there and get the ball rolling, because she needs to stay ahead of the pace of the game. She needs to lead the way in terms of tempo. If she falls behind, she's a really cool ranged minion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Really cool, though. She's a really <laughs> difficult champion to play. You kind of want to get off the gate very early, stealing away camps, leveraging your mobility. You could bully a Jarvan. There's very little he can do against the Nidalee, but you need that priority in lanes, and uh, I don't think T1's going to be looking to give it anytime soon. This is why I love this team, though. BLG has so much swagger. They're always willing to pay these hard-to-execute picks. I want to see the early jungle path here and how aggressive he can, he can take because that top side of the map, that is BLG territory, okay? I mean, Zeus versus Bin, a top lane matchup that I think everyone is excited to watch once more. These two players are some of the best in that role. And you can hear the support for yeah. Taiwan. NA versus EU earlier was, it was the crowd was hyped there in, during the games, but now the home crowd <laughs> favorites, they're in the house. It's always fun to hear those differences when there's one of the home teams that fans just love in the building. And it's T1, man. Like yeah. The most popular team in the world. Yep, yes. exactly. All right, a reminder, you can log into your Riot account on lolliesports.com and watch Worlds live to earn exclusive Worlds emotes and icons. That's right now. It's live. Go do it, lolliesports.com. But let's see how this early game is going to play out now because I'm so interested in this Nidalee pick specifically. How do they enable it? How do they get it going? So the beauty of what we get to see is we actually saw this bot lane matchup earlier in the G2 NRG series. Uh -huh. And the range the advantage. Highest level. The highest level, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes, of course. Um, uh, the range advantage that this center Tom Kench does give you in the early game that you can really uh, have a lot of control in the bot side of the map. Interestingly, BLG going for a bit of a delayed invade here. Yeah, owner could be under pressure, as you can see. They see it marked with a spear. The three-man invade coming out from BLG. Crash down. Not going to find anything He's other fight. than the red buff. Now they're backing away. Red buff still at about 1,000 HP. Owner taking some damage, gets ignited, has to continue falling back. Shun still trying to find a little bit of poke oh. here. They engage. Oh, nicely catching Owner out, but now Shun's going to back away. Owner with a flash out, trying to stay alive, but now Elk is under pressure, down to 100 <laughs> HP. They're nearly going to kill him. It's first blood back over to T1. The invade crashes and burns. Now Shun has to try to get away. The flash is already down. Can he escape the power of the Kench? He's been hit with the lick, the flash of the wall. How how many licks to the center of a Nidalee pop? It's only gonna take one more. Shun falls. Carrier grabs the second kill of the game for T1. And he ain't done yet. Kumayushi's coming in. Carrier's got a red buff. On is continuing to be slowed. T1 may have just won the game in two and a half minutes. Oh, oh wow. wow. On barely lives, but Carrier is a monster. Another knockup coming out as Elk. He shouldn't die here, but he's nearly oh going to be killed. Oh, my goodness. BLG thought they were being clever, and T1 smacked him right in the mouth. We literally saw this matchup earlier, and once they get ahead, they become oppressive as all hell. Yeah, we Carrier. might have to throw out this data. I don't know. <laughs> with, with, the, with the way that level one went, this is going to influence the stats. Oh, it is. My goodness. The idea 
from BLG is to delay invade and believe that you can win out on the three versus three. But the engage from on whiffs his his W from the uh, from the rail actually collides with the wall. And once they don't have that initial damage, then T1 can just use the range advances. They also got a bit of sustain coming out from Gumiyushi, the Guardian from the uh, the Tom Kench as well. Yeah. Meant that in the extended fight, T1 came out ahead. And while Ona did lose his red buff. I think you can quite clearly say that this was worth it for T1. <laughs> yeah, definitely so. And Faker, I, I believe he's the one who came first, even with the Conqueror, not going with the Hello Blades mid Azir. So uh, definitely all things pointing towards T1 here. Now, let's see, as it settles down, as it calms down, you have to keep track of all the summoner spells that were blown in it. If you had a plan previously coming into the game of top lane and looking towards Renekton plays and flash stunning into spear combos, you have to think about bottom lane now with so many people blowing their flashes. Yeah, lots of stuff down. Now. Are there any summoner spells still remaining? Kumi Yushi has his flash on just about to get that ignite back up and ready to go. So plenty of vulnerabilities down here. Shun able to secure the second crab. Bit of an oh. engage. There comes the abyssal dive, but now the counter attack with the crash. Oh! Down. The spear goes wide. Gumiyushi gets away, and now another counter play coming out from Owner. But Carry is killed instead. BLG are on the board. The game's not done yet, boys. Yeah, very smart. You have to pay attention to that bottom lane. They return to the scene of the crime, Vedius. That they <laughs> do. More They're looking for a dive. I think that with Ona and Gumiyushi, Gumiyushi's very squishy here. Gumiyushi only 350 HP. Shun trying to tag him with the auto attack, slow him down first, but he misses the spear. Gumiyushi can escape. Owner's back underneath the tier one turret. Remember, everybody's still only level three, level four. Owner jumps in, here doesn't hit Faker. the knockoff, but now Faker's ready to clean these guys up. Level five is here. There's some damage potential there, but Yagao's coming around behind him. Faker's gonna chase these guys out. They can disengage in time, but now Faker goes in after Yagao. He's got the higher DPS, so he'll try to use those soldiers a little bit. Man, what a crazy early game. Yeah, I mean, some of these spears are reminding me of Kadrill's Lee Sin cues, you know, <laughs> with the direction that they're going I right thought now, Yankos just... was the meme. Is, is, is oh, no, meme? I mean, Yankos has much higher hit accuracy than some of the Kadrill cues in his history, see, but that's I fine, see. that's fine. So we can see this initial play. The Q does go wide from Shun, and it's a it's a good promising engage from T1, but the re-engage from on, the spear goes wide, but it doesn't matter. Gumiyushi's forced to flash. Admittedly, he doesn't have a huge amount of damage this early on in the game. We talked about how Nidalee can just bully a Jarvan out of the early jungle, and that's because of how much stronger she is in those early skirmishes. And while that EQ can look lethal, Nidalee in the extended fight will come out on top. So it's six minutes into the game, and Shunna also hasn't based, uh, by the way, on True. this, this Nidalee. He's going to go for another clear. Raptors pro possibly into the Krugs as well for a big, big buy. All right, no action again for now. Just a little bit of poking back and forth. This game has led us to believe that anything could happen at any point here in the first you know, six minutes. It's so funny every time we get into matchups like this and we're like, mm, the top lane. <laughs> Zayus versus Bin. Everyone's super amped to watch those two compete. And then we have a look at top lane. Dead even in farm. The lane is neutral. It's the team fights where we'll really see their impact. Whereas the bot lane is where the chaos is rampant. Faker once again makes his way out onto the mini map, moving into that fog of war, creating that sense of pressure that Elk and On have to worry about. Jun has finally been able to base, has picked himself up a first key component. Ooh, nice Mega Nar into the wall there from Zayas, just trading aggressively with Bin, hops back into him at the crunch. Bin still getting away, wallop doesn't hit, no more follow up there. Of course, just trying to put as much damage into him as he can, but Bin still having with the Flash and the Dominus, there's not really any true kill potential there. Yeah, also we just saw Owner go into the bottom side river to grab the crab and get that extra vision. So they know after the full clear from Shun, he's going to head back on down towards this bottom side. They saw him just grab that ward by mid lane. The mid lane has just been farming, so they're fine with all this, but uh, they did get an alert, so both of them should know bottom side presence. Now. We've seen a lot of early action, but credit to Ona. He's, yep. he's oh, hang on, Ooh. bot lane play. Shattering strike, nicely done. Caria forced to flash out of that one just to escape, but now they're looking for an angle with Owner. On still trying to get away, back into the river. Shun and Elk falling back to their own tier one. They disengage in time, Owner can't get in there from an EQ. So just a bit of testing the waters, you know, looking for an opportunity there. The flash being lost from Caria. 
But the gold advantage still sits in T1's favor. Shun once again looking for something. We're back. Both but junglers. They can't see it, right? If we get an opportunity to toggle that vision, that control ward is limiting that. Uh, what T1 can see right now. Gumiyushi has no mana. Kyria just got six, though. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They're not going to take that fight anymore, and they're going to nope. disengage. Herald and Dragon both up on the map. Both these teams have their eyes set on the bot lane, and it looks like no early objective going to come through. Yep, Kyria just trying to jump forward, keep the pressure on here, use those tongue lashes to try to poke at these guys. We talked back when we saw this matchup the first time in the earlier series today. The sustain from the Senna creates such an obnoxious lane state to have to deal with. It's so easy to just constantly try to take these trades if you're the Tom Kench. Go up, trade Tongue Lash with something else. Eat a Void Seeker for a Tongue Lash, Senna's gonna heal it off. Gentlemen, how crazy, you know, you've already had your big upset today, but is it NA that's also innovated the bot lane meta? Have they found the answer to things like Zaya? It might just be. The, the the energy special, man. Uh, we'll take credit, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, it, it's for sure been getting scrimmed by a bunch of teams, but I'm down. I saw NA play at first, Kobe. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I, I'm feeling in a good mood, so we'll accept all credit here. 4K help, though, on this Herald, and Shun Six. is watching. Yeah. Okay. Six Every, everybody's coming. Yep. That oh. is a little bit further, but or uh, Kaisa, but it's a party. It's a party up here on the top side, River. The Herald not going to be taken down just yet. They're going to smite it away. Owner picks up the eyeball. Everybody came to the party, but now we're all leaving to go do our homework. Karia finds a tongue lash onto Yagao. No more follow up here just yet. Nice root coming out from Guma Yushi. Now they're going to go in. There's the Wombo combo. T1 ain't going to kill anybody just yet. Yagao barely gets away. Owner's ready to swoop in for the Cataclysm. And on gets turned off. Guma Yushi flips the switch. And now Shun tries to fire back. Massive double kill over the top. Guma Yushi is shooting straight. Senna's going to get some bans in the future. I can feel it. That is three kills all in the hands of Guma now. And T1, let's see. They're pushing topside. They're pushing mid as well with Elk. Trying to fish around. There's a ward on him, so he's not going to be able to interrupt Baker here. Should be able to finish off the cannon and push that one in too. That fight looked a little chaotic initially for T1. And you'll see here, once they go into the fight, like, the response from BLG is good. Like, yeah, the, the Shockwave comes through, CCing uh, Faker on with a response as well. Yeah. Owner's not in the fight yet. It's when Owner re-engages that it starts going in their favor. And I was worried for Gumiyushi, stuck here on the front lines, but he had so much health back. And then he's able to disengage, find that snipe, and the crowd erupts here in Seoul. Yeah, it's kind of funny how Guma ate the tanky, remember? Uh, ate Owner, and yeah. uh, Guma's like, all right, fine, I guess I'm flashing <laughs> out. <laughs> But Gary was like, you know what? I'll be next to you more in the future in the game, so I'll be able to protect your flash. Well, look at the gold here, picking up three kills in the bot lane, leading alongside Faker. They are identical right now. And he's only at 13 CS. The Senna doing wonders for T1. Yeah. Total damage. Zay is topping those charts, but it's pretty easy to do when you're Nara against the melee. Flashing forward. Mega Nara in the wall. Wall up. Rock toss. One more hit. will do it. Zayas solo kills. Bin. This ain't no finals, okay? This ain't no finals. Zayas is locked in. BLG are trying to respond, but they may be getting collapsed on. Yeah, Karia comes in with the Abyssal Dive. They're ready to reinforce Owner and make sure that he doesn't get jumped by the members of BLG that were looking for a play. Void Seeker not going to really do a whole lot here as T1 can just walk it off. I really do want to put more emphasis onto Zayas, though. He did so much work when T1 had such a hard year losing Faker for so long. Really, owner was, or uh, Zeus was doing overtime, trying to keep them together, and very, very good recovery from this team to be able to make it through playoffs, make it here to Worlds, and especially on these types of picks for Faker, the Azir, the Nico, definitely their comfort zone. I mean, T1 have just set themselves up fantastically. Elk in oh. a bit of danger. They're looking for another one. Carrier goes in for Elk, forces him to try Uma. to play defensively. Kuma has so much range, so much damage. Elk is going to get rooted up. He pops Ooh. the cleanse to escape that ulti. Nice play there from Guma, really leveraging the range to his advantage and bullying this Kaisa out on trying to respond. It's so difficult to do when the Tom Kench is right there with the Devourer ready for the save. If On would have committed, they could have immediately countered there with Karia, no problem. Rift Herald summoned up here. They're looking for plates, and I don't think BLG's gonna stop them. Already grabbing that first one. There's another one going over with the charge. Don't think they quite have enough damage to get the fourth after the extra resistances have been added, so they'll walk away from that. But it's a two and a half thousand gold lead for T1. 
Akuma farmed like 10 stacks in that single skirmish. He was just constantly hitting onto his opponent. Yeah, I just clicked on the souls to try and check in, and he's already 49 right now. It's kind of a shooting gallery down there in the bottom lane with so much action starting from level one. And in the context of this comp, oh, Zayas, he's going for another kill. Okay, no, he's going to show restraint. He did have a two-level lead. I really thought he'd look for the dive. I guess he doesn't have full information yet. But you look at these little wards in the enemy jungle. Moving the wrong mouse. <laughs> uh, you can see these just littered to get a bit of information as to where Shun is, giving Zayas the freedom to play as aggressively as he wants. Uh, but let's look back at the solo kill. And he's doing so well because Nar's going to turn into such a powerful split push and team fight presence for Team One. I believe too for live right now. I'd like to. I wonder if there's a, a picture in picture we can see for the dragon setup because T1 uh, are in a really prime position to start setting up the objectives. When you're getting Zayas solo kills like this, um, when you're winning team fights, think, well, there you go. There it is. Revealed. Uh, yes, easy setup for them as expected. Dragon number one. It's a, it's decently late into the game, but uh, they should be able to snowball pretty effectively. Their position around the dragon is the dragon is dead. Yeah. Nice position to have when you're looking to get the That's game That's what I was expecting. Forward. I guess we didn't need the picture in picture pop up to confirm. So, well, coming into this series, I look back at all of T1's games and against TL, they had a difficult early game. They couldn't really do much. Against Genji, they actually had a pretty solid early game, but then it was the team fights where they ended up falling short. And then against Cloud9, they ended up looking incredibly clean from start to finish. And it feels like throughout this tournament, they have just been ramping up as they often do when they come to international events. You know, this team in the group stage, has the worst record ever is five and one. They only lose a wow, game. Wow, that must be so horrible. <laughs> like that, like I they, was told this is a Swiss stage, not a my, stage. My point is, though, <laughs> that this team has already lost once to Gen G, and they are saying we're not losing anymore. That's and the roof. That is the roof. Yeah. And uh, coming into this series, they are looking strong. Their early game is looking good, but BLG are known for their team fighting, their ability to play the 5v5s, but with the gold advantage continuing to grow, it might not matter as yeah. T1 is in a fantastic position. I mean, T1's still stinging from MSI. They want revenge over BLG for that elimination. BLG taking them 3-1 and kicking them out. So definitely have a bit of an ax to grind on their side. Let's all remember, too, the level one that started out this game. Um, definitely, that was a lot of variance in that level one. And this is going to be a long series. And you bring up the fact that they were eliminated by BLG back at MSI. Remember, this is not an elimination game here today. It is a promotion game. You guarantee a spot in the quarterfinals if you win this one. But the loser will still go on to play in that last chance set of games tomorrow. Three best of threes, back to back to back. Show's going to be starting a little earlier, so make sure you tune in. 5 a.m. CET, 9 p.m. PST. But T1 now being challenged in this topside river as BLG move in to control the Rift Herald around the spawn of the second one. They don't want to lose out on more neutral objectives here. Baker has TP, but I like the look of that bottom push. They should just buy time for Baker. Push that wave all the way in. Yeah, just waste as much of BLG's time as they can. Karia and Gumayushi are so annoying to deal with right now. The Senna has so much range, and you pretty much got to throw enough at him to overcommit to him twice because of the save from the Kench. Yeah, so annoying. I mean, the Tom Kench constantly just walking up into your face, bullying you off. And it looks like that's going to be all that they need with Bin going to answer that bottom wave. T1, they rotate Faker over to mid and collect another objective, simultaneously taking the Rift Herald and mid lane. Just beautiful stuff from T1 here in this first game in the best of three. Objective bounties are available soon. That lets you know the state of the early game here, just 17 minutes in, and we've already got ourselves what looks to be a four and a half thousand gold lead. I mean, I'm just looking at that comp as well. And from my perspective, this was like a very difficult game for T1 to lose. Like, they have such a massive range advantage. Sena is one of the best scaling champions in the game, period. Mm. And when you pair that up with an Azir, you know, we talked about earlier some examples of long-range champions, Caitlyn, Ezreal, two really strong long-range champs that work so well at playing front to back. Sena works in the exact same way, and her range is only going to get longer the longer that this game goes on. So I feel like BLG are going to have to find some miracle fight or a big throw from T1 to be able to turn this one around. Yeah, and when your Nar is solo killing and has a ginormous lead over the Renekton, oh, yeah. 
That is going to be a lot more useful. Yeah, like you have no options in the sideline. You feel like your team fight options are limited. You, the push, like you can't contest it anywhere. That's if why they picked Nidalee and went for a level one. <laughs> <laughs> one are in a commanding position right now. They've caught bot, they've pushed that in. They've caught mid, they've pushed that in. You look at top as well, Faker having some cover from Ona. This was where we saw some blunders from them uh, against Gen.G. Gen.G found some great windows to punish Faker when he was pushing in these side lanes. And he has been left isolated for the time being. Yeah. But he's going to play safer as a response. Yeah. And so much safer, too, for the uh, for the Azir in those matchups on the side lane. With Dragon coming 30 seconds and Faker still having uh, his teleport. I, I don't know exactly how many seconds left on you, Gauss, and how that's going to match up with the Dragon. But it probably should be up by Dragon time or pretty close. 15 seconds until that Drake. It is important to remember what you noted earlier, Kobe. It was a pretty late first one, yeah. so it's not going to be a fast soul stack even if they go 4-0. But you know that BLG doesn't want to allow them to just continue taking everything on the map for free. It is still a 5k gold advantage, though. It's so hard to take a fight in open ground, especially when T1 already have priority over this bot lane river real estate. Zeus is in position in the bottom lane. He's pushing up. Faker is back on the other end of the map, pushing up topside, but he's got his TP ready to go to join. Oh, Looks he's like joining. Yeah, he's right. ready. Here comes the fight. BLG feel like they need this. All right, keep your eyes on On. That Relengage would need to be absolutely nasty to win a 5K deficit team fight. Instead, they're going to decide against it. BLG will walk off, having watched T1 take the Drake. I mean, BLG... We're kind of in our position, just acting as spectators on that dragon. They didn't even try to cross map anywhere. They didn't even try to do anything elsewhere on the map. They just wanted to try and find a fight, and T1 gave them no angles. Absolutely yeah. none. They were funneled into that choke point. BLG didn't even try to get push in bot and then access via the river that way, because I think they were so scared of Zeus with the pressure that he was generating. Like, all three towers are up. They have full control over the map. A 5k gold lead. BLG are running out of answers, and they're running out of answers quickly. Yeah, I feel like they got draft gapped, they got level one gapped, they got top gapped, they got bottom gapped. There's, there's gaps everywhere, but yes. yes. So many gaps. <laughs> so many. I, I don't know if there's a word for that, a collection of the, gaps. The whole yes. game is a valley yeah. right now. We have, we have found our way into quite a gorge here, gentlemen. A great word, an excellent yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, the ones you don't get to hear too often. At this point, T1 can start playing around the Baron. They don't have the fastest Baron. I mean, of course, with the Zia, it's never going to be the slowest. But uh, I guess right now they're looking to play for that tier one in the top side of the map. They want to try and move their vision, get control over mid, and then start threatening that tower. But BLG are pretty committed to defending it. They do, of course, still have Zeus' TP. They could look for a play with that. But here we are. They're looking to chip away at this tier one. Well, those chips are going to be pretty intense once the Herald it has comes its the way hammer. with the turret. There it goes. Yep, just immediately smashes that thing down. Three to zero now in the turret count. T1 absolutely owning the rift in this first game. Carrier takes a bit of damage, but he doesn't care. It's so easy to just keep using this Kench as a brick wall. Harold's going to get ready for the second charge. Kaboom! It connects. And because they were able to move so far forward up in the jungle, mirroring that same progression in the top lane with the Herald, they pushed their opponents all the way back, took control of the enemy jungle, exfiltrated safely. But it's not even just that. Look at the bot lane as well. Zeus keeping this pressure up controls the bot side jungle too, has that control ward. There is that single ward for a potential TP flank, but that isn't an option for Yagao right now. And T1, they controlled the top side, they controlled the bot side, they're replenishing their wards, they're spending their money. Two items now finished for Faker. A second in the works for Gumayushi. Yeah. And everything looking up for T1 here in the game, game one of this series. It's just so incredibly hard for BLG to find a time to fight because you're down on these item power spikes, but also it doesn't get better for you if you wait. But there's a pick! Zeus getting jumped on. They're throwing the kitchen sink at him. Beautiful shutdown from BLG. That's the wrong side of Summoner's Rift, buddy. Little Mininar wandering into the dark forest here. That's the time to go for it for oh, BLG. Yeah. But really, what can they get with that pick? I mean, it's so difficult even with getting a person advantage because your side lanes are both constantly pushed in by T1. So they don't really have objectives to go for, and they're even under attack as T1 continue to push in Good. 4v5. Shun's health just yeah. brought down a half after Gumiyushi laid his sights on him. 
four members actually putting pressure on the BLG. Faker with the damage. Yep, Faker now disengaging alongside Owner. They don't want to end up getting caught in too lopsided of a fight before their allies can move over and reach them. They do crash the wave into the mid lane tier two. None of those tier two turrets yet demolished. Remember that top lane tier two was the one that took the damage from the Herald, so it's still pretty low. Back and away now is on the Hex Flash, finds Ooh, Owner, that forces out the Flash from the Jarvan. That's a big summoner spell. That could have been lethal. Uh, if he had died there, that's a barren start for BLG. And even though they find themselves behind, it's worth the risk, especially when you're not playing against the Smite's Owner. He needs to be careful, but he will get away with his life for now. T1, continue to play the patient game. We're going to look back at this pick from Zayas. You just have to look at the minimap. He's overextended. He, yeah. uh, he shouldn't have been there. The rest of his team, we're nowhere near. There's nothing that they can do to punish elsewhere on the map. And uh, just a mistake from Zayas. Even the best make them sometimes, but T1 is still enjoying an incredibly favored game state. You can see the gold difference over time presented by AWS, just showing how it's been this up and to the right movement in that blue line for T1 ever since the very beginning of what you mentioned earlier, Kobe, kind of a, an aberration of a level one. Yeah, and... The only reason we're not going to see T1 go turbo mode and continue to push is because they also have the luxury, you know, of this late game. So there's no reason for them to risk anything versus BLG, who have been able to work miracles out of uh, other teams rushing fights towards them. So they'll continue on stacking those dragons, even though it is a little bit of a delayed pace. Maybe we see the point where uh, Zayu's priority on his split push on the side lane, bottom lane, does result in a setup for the Baron. But I think only in a very secure setup would T1 actually go for that. T1 have pretty good turn off of the Baron. So after collecting Dragon, they might try and turn their resources towards that, do a 4-1 split push, and whoa, never mind. Whoa. BLG fight now. Shun just goes over the wall, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to be there anymore. Flash back away just to escape from Zeus's Nar, it's sole point at 24 minutes for T1. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a little frustrated with BLG because, like, they should just be trying to cross map. They should just be using multiple members topside to, at the very least, get some bounty gold back. Because you're, you're in a situation where if, if you feel like you need to force a fight, then trying to funnel through that choke point at blue, that's the second <laughs> time you've now tried to do that, and T1 have just made fun of you. So. I feel like that BLG, if they do want to come back into this, they need to be finding other things on the map rather than just running face first into T1. Well, they're running into them again here as they try to find something. Once the owner of Gumiushi, not going to get anything back. And as Gumiushi just keeps farming all these souls, building that range like you were talking about earlier, earlier Vettius, every single one of these attempted steps up is going to become more and more punishing as you take oh. more and more Senna shots in trade. Bin going in, looking for Zeus. Meganar back onto both targets. Elk tried to swoop in there, catch him off guard with a killer instinct, and Zeus just walked away from it. That opened a window mid. All right, they're going to be able to push at least half of it. BLG, this is the moment. All right, TP coming in. They want to try to stop this, find a punish. Knock up on two coming out from owner. Guma Yushi looking to disengage back up towards the top side of the jungle. TP coming in now. T1 regrouping. Low health bars on BLG. Zeus is taking towers right now. Zeus did not join. T1 said, we're fine without you, buddy. All right, pin is low. Still lots of free firing damage coming up from Gumi Yushi. Remember, there is no ulti available for Alcon. Goes in, finding a magnet storm onto three, but he ain't gonna find any kills just yet. On is gonna die first. They take out the jungler second. Ben ain't gonna get it. Shun is down. T1, run them over. The range is lethal from T1. Four versus five. BLG just can't even get close to T1. And when they finally do, Carrier devours his mid laner and brings him back into the fight to wreak havoc. Carrier, he's oh, not done. Oh no, he even stops Bin's recall. If he gets this croc here, there it is. A pistol dive takes him out. And critically, this means his respawn is now desynced from the rest of the team. <laughs> the lick hit confirm on the W. Tom Kench claims another. Let's take a look, because look at the mini-map during this replay. Honestly, while T1 are taking care of business, really good cataclysm into EQ out there from owner. The NAR is just taking towers on bottom side, and then they make the call with this ward here. Teleport in, they go for the turn. T1, they turn it around. Red buff is picked up, Karia goes in. The shockwave doesn't do much damage at all. 
punished. It's just a massacre. Bin's not even really in the fight either. They didn't have ultimate for him or for Kaiser because of the play they tried to make in the bot lane. And uh, wow, then wow. Carrier is able to find wow, this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> is able to find this kill onto Bin. Just a one-sided stomp from really beginning to end from T1. That was the only promising opportunity that BLG was able to find, and T1 handled it with calm patience. And uh, now with the Baron, they're looking to siege. All right, let's see how long this base can stand. Top lane tier three turret is already down, so there's an open inhib available if T1 just want to rush it. They still got this power play for Baron from another minute and 40 seconds. The minions will do enough work under the inhibitor here in the top side themselves. Zay is about ready to transform. Magnet Storm was used for a whole lot of nothing. Owner's got Yagao locked down, but Owner's gonna drop instead. They'll trade him back to the mid laner, and Shun falls too. Now it's two inhibitors down and a 4v3 for T1. The souls are all over the place, but they're the souls of BLG players as T1 is not stopping here. Elk may have been the one to take out Owner, but now the push just keeps going. Zayas will grab another on Bin as Elk gets the Killer Instinct right back into his own fountain. He flashes away just to live. <laughs> T1 just stomp BLG in game one. Gary is having fun too. Oh, he is. <laughs> I mean, from start to finish, what a great performance from T1. We talked about it earlier in the cast, but it does feel like this team has only ramped up throughout the tournament. Their debut against T1, uh, TL was a little bit shaky, but from game to game, it feels like that they have gotten better and better. And we're looking at an informed T1 today. Man, oh man, T1 coming out swinging here in game number one. To hear more about it, let's go ahead and toss back over to the desk. Thank you so much, Sovereign Game 1 out of T1. And it has been the loudest here that it has been so far. I think Ooh. that this just because these were all Dokla fans who stayed and are now supporting <laughs> I T1. Think so. I think so. Big, Do Big Dokes rather, is uh, joining us on the desk as well. Thank you for joining us. Congrats. Thank you for having me. It's uh, today was a, a crazy day, you know. Um, really happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just you know, warming up the fans for the T1 yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm. That's the my undercard. job. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna try and uh, I'm just gonna stop being angry at you now because that wouldn't be nothing for a good. <laughs> you would test. never. I would never. Just kidding though. Uh, Maurits, talk to me first about this game. Um, T1, I so know you were a little bit nervous. I, I always am when LCK plays. I, I do think that T1 have a history of when teams have beaten them and, and BLG really uh, dunked on them at MSI, right? That's the type of matches that then coming into Worlds, they very often perform in. I also think, though, and, and, and uh, credit where credit is due, they played their lead out very well. But given these drafts, I don't think the game really went BLG's way because the whole point of, of, of Kench and, and Senna is that they are an unmovable brick wall. And then BLG was like, what if we just slam our head into it level one? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we played a similar yeah. comp to this. You know, maybe T1 yeah. saw our draft and they they're did. like, wow, we should just copy it. Um, <laughs> I, I just want to point out the top matchup where I think Zeus has a lot more agency than uh, Bin here and, you know, big Zeus fan here. But um, yeah, I think uh, for BLG, I think they should draft in a way where it's a bit more even matchup because the Gnar Renekton is just scaling and then the Gnar will eventually win. So um, I didn't like that too much out of the draft, so we'll see how they adapt. Yeah, it puts them in a situation where they're actually playing off of the back foot, which with how aggressive they like to be over one combined kill per minute in the LPL, which is the highest of all the teams uh, in the LPL, it's not their style. It isn't. Uh, we wanted to check in with a couple of picks that have only showed or reared their heads today. Obviously, NRG is setting the meta <laughs> for the world's Swiss stage, specifically, you know, the Senna and the Tom in general, Jad. Yeah, Dokla, I don't need you to give anything away. we got to hide this stuff reporters. So this was just my observation. So these are the most banned champions up top, and then the three most picked in each role gives you a nice snapshot of the types of things we're seeing. It's a ton of Engage. It was a ton of Zaya wins. It was 14-2 and two in the first five days of Swiss. So now we're seeing that band a lot, which then makes Kaisa the top tier AD carry, but Kaisa actually has some counters, so that's where we're seeing the meta of all. I wish I had this graphic before my pickums, you know? That would have helped a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that, that would have been good. I, I went with Lee in most rules played. That, that's yeah. not happening. I had the Nautilus for the death one. Yeah, you know? yeah I think everyone, everyone did. We killed Vicky a lot. The big thing though is we <laughs> yeah. found the count, uh, counter to Zaya, which is ban her, and then we also found, I think now, the counter to Kaisa. We've already seen some experimentation. The Tristana the LNG pulled out, I think, is good, but the fact that if you add Senna and Kench that as well, and it's not just Kench, right? But I think that that combo is ones the teams have probably have most experience with. Uh, 
it might change the meta going forward in the tournament. It might, but first let's talk yeah. about the Senna and the Tama. What happened in this early game? Every second counts, and thanks to the reliable Cisco network, T1 get a huge win in the level one fight to start the game with a big lead, Maurits. Talk me through yeah, this. Yeah, and, and after, it's yeah. a mini comp. So the moment yeah. that this happens, if you're a BLG fan, you're already like, oh, oh no. And, and it's the early passive that J4 has, plus his E, which gives uh, attack speed. And then Senna and Kench, their level one is insane. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what BLG is kind of thinking or how this, you know, would pan out for them. But I mean, the Royal W miss, crucially, Nilly Spears. I mean, the first one hit the red buff. I mean, they kind of have the right idea, but I think they probably, you know, overestimated their strength. Yeah, and this was just maybe thinking that they needed to have something happen early, but with the Nidalee Renekton, a lot of times you just want to slow play that yeah. until you can get the Renekton sent to the Nidalee Spear. This just set them so far back. Is this your first time seeing this Dokla because you were in uh, other Yeah, I mean, members? I have not seen Nidalee uh, pretty much in Srams or the whole world stage. Oh. And I mean, maybe that's a league, but I, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just talking about the level one. Oh, level one. Oh, game. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of level ones that go really bad into a remake. I've seen that all the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess you we were saying you were still basking in the glory, so maybe you just didn't quite catch that level one. You're doing press interviews, so yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think that what BLG tries it, which is what we've seen a lot of team tunes, is say, hey, red side is a side where you have to go for big swing and a miss. Uh, and it's mostly been misses, right? That's the reason yeah. why blue side is as I good mean, as it is. And this one, also, I think that you can run it back, but you probably just go for something uh, a bit more conventional. I feel like you, After you would level never one, take red, I, I, yeah. I don't think you take that risk, right? But I mean, the, I don't think it's necessarily the red side decided this game. I think their planning was just really bad. Like, mm -hmm. they didn't play through Renekton in Italy. Uh, which, which can set up Rift, and their balling should just be like, you know, let the Nidalee farm get fed, you know, just have the tempo lead, and then try to impact the map, like, uh, with her advantage. But, I mean, the game kind of just ended before she could even get to that point. Did yeah. BLG select blue side? Um, no surprises wow, there. It's going to stay the same. <laughs> um, Dokla, do you have experience scrimming either of these teams? I guess you do. And is yeah. there anything you can tell us about how you think BLG might react or T1 might do? I don't know. Usually our games don't go that long. So <laughs> I don't really win, know. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm curious what to see the top lane matchup will be because I think drafting agency for Bin is, like, the biggest thing. I don't think you want him on a Renekton versus Nar matchup mm. pretty much ever. So maybe if he's in our side. But, I mean, this might be the best Nar you know, in the world. So I don't think you should probably give him that. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, yeah I can appreciate say it. it. So Maritz doesn't have to say it. So <laughs> we'll see uh, what it. the top lane brings us for game two. And as we gear up for that game two between BLG and T1, let's check out some exclusive behind the scenes photos. Thanks to the Uppo cam.
in a new roommate to save money? Is that the plan? Say hi to Glenn from work. Yeah, I think I have a much better plan. We switched to my plan from Verizon. That is a good plan. Glenn? Get my plan starting at just $25 when you bring your own phones. Plus, save when you add perks like the Disney bundle. It's your Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings.